You know, I had a lot of buildup leading up to this book. Everybody telling me about how difficult it was to read. And I'm like, it'll be fine. And now that I've read it, man. Hey, what's up, booze and bookworms? Mike back today to talk a little spooky season, guys. We're officially kicking it off with the 19... 19- 89, I would call it now horror classic, The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. And I say a horror classic because I feel like this is a story that everyone has heard of. If they're into the horror community at all, uh, I feel like you've heard about this book from someone within that community for one reason or another. Now, uh, it is based off of the true story, the very true story of Sylvia Likens uh, in 1965 and, and her murder. And I think that that's something that has kind of just helped to build up the, uh, the 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 legend of this book, I guess you'd say, because it is very much based off of that story. There are names changed. There's a lot of events that happen pretty much in the same order, but obviously there is some drama attached to it to make it an actual story. Now, uh, I think from this is, I, like I said, I kind of heard a lot of the build up about you know how difficult this was going to read. Not from the writing style. This isn't like a Malazan book, but more of the content that Ketchum puts in this book. And that he, uh, let's just say that the camera doesn't turn away when the horrors are actually happening. So it's a book I had heard a ton about leading up to this review. And it was something I was going to read last year. I just kind of ran out of time during Fright Fest. But uh, it is a book that I know that Stephen King actually has the blurb on the front of the cover. It's a book that he's talked very, very highly about in the past. And a lot of people will be like, well, you know, Stephen King recommends so you're going to like. Well, Stephen King also recommended The Hunger by Omakatsu, and we know how that turned out. So I was kind of like a little apprehensive, but like I said, I felt like this book had been built up enough for me. So I was going to get a reaction one way or the other. So how did it go? Well, we're going to get into it. But we're going to begin like usual, guys, by talking about what is the book about. Now, we are in suburbia, shaded tree-lined streets, well-tended lawns, and cozy homes. A nice, quiet place to grow up unless you're a teenage Meg and her crippled sister Susan. On a dead-end street in the dark, damp basement of the Chandler house, Meg and Susan are left captive to the savage whims and rages of a distant aunt who is rapidly ascending into madness. It is a madness that infects all three of her sons and finally, the entire neighborhood. Only one troubled boy stands hesitantly between Meg and Susan and their cruel, torturous deaths. A boy with a very, very difficult and maybe dangerous decision to make. Guys, 1989, The Girl Next Door. Now, with this, this is going to kind of be tough to talk about for a reason because I know that there was a lot... I don't want to say that there was controversy. There's a lot of people who were trying to talk me out of reading this book and then also of covering this book because they feel like it is glorifying the death of something very real. Now, guys, this is loosely based off of that. Now, I don't want to take awareness away from what happened to Sylvia Likens, but I just want to say that when I talk about the good and the bad about this book, obviously, guys, it's all horrific stuff here, okay? If you're looking at it from the point of view of this is something that really, really happened. I'm looking at it from the story, so I don't want anyone feeling like I'm being insensitive uh, to, to, to Miss Likens and her family and all that stuff and her descendants. I'm not trying to do that at all. I'm just talking about the literary form here, okay? So I got that out of the way. Let's talk about the good and the bad. I think Stephen King fans, you're going to feel some familiar beats here. You're going to like this. You're going to feel right at home at first because it does have a lot of the same, you know, coming of age, uh, boyhood kind of kind of traits of the, 19, the late 1950s. I, I think a lot of those things are here. You're going to feel the same kind of things that, you know, he would talk about some in his books. Now, the prose isn't anything like Stephen's. I mean, that's why Stephen King is Stephen King, you know. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not trying to put it there. I'm just saying that you're going to feel like you're fitting back into a comfortable pair of sweatpants here because you feel like, okay, I've done this with Mr. King before. I kind of know where this is going. Now, where Ketchum takes it a hard left is it, it, something that you would say, okay, that could be Kingish, but I think, uh, yeah, it, it varies greatly or whatever. But it has a lot of those same elements, like I said, of coming of age, obviously, in that time period as well. But I think that this one really explores themes a lot more than a lot of people are going to take out of this. They're just going to see the horror and not going to be able to see anything else. But there's a lot of themes. Uh, namely, the biggest one, I think, is the powerlessness that kids feel around adults, especially in this time period. I mean, even in my my time period, growing up a uh, Gen Xer, growing up in the 80s, uh, yeah, you always had that feeling of, uh, well, you know, no one's ever going to believe me 
over an adult, right? I mean, say like like your teacher's being an absolute jerk. Is your is your, is your was your parents going to believe you? No, they're going to say, well, what are you doing wrong? You know, it's a it was just a different generation then, and it's a much much different generation in the 1950s. You know, so basically, it's always going to be that feeling of kids not feeling like they have a voice. Because if uh, they're going to respect their elders no matter what's going on, and they're going to know that hey, you you can't tell because you know that's just that's just the way that things were in that time period. But uh, I think that if you're looking for a book that's going to kind of disturb you this Halloween, this is gonna this is gonna fit that bill probably. I'll say probably this is probably the most disturbing book I've ever read, and I've I've read you know all of Lovecraft, and this is a very very disturbing book because uh, it it is. You know, with a Lovecraft book, or sometimes with Stephen King, you can look past the, the big, the big greasy monsters. You know, and say, okay, well, that's just, that's just, you know, they're monsters. You know, you expect that. With this, exploring that very real theme of humans being the monsters and the pain that they do to one another, I think that's what makes this book truly terrifying. Seeing how far someone would go, but I, I do think that a, a good thing here is it is really a snapshot of what life was like in suburbia in America in the 1950s and. Really, it's just, it was, it was just really, he talks about one passage where he's talking about how like in the suburbs here, there is no crime. Everybody just leaves their doors unlocked. You know, it's basically, you, you leave the house in the morning, you don't come home till dark. Your parents never wonder where you are. It's just because bad things like this didn't happen, you know? So it was just a, a different age and I think it captures that brilliantly. So uh, there are a lot more themes in this than just the one I mentioned above. I think it's an examination of guilt, of compassion, of doing the right thing. Even when you feel like you've got to stand alone, you're the only person in the room with that opinion, I think that's something that's touched on very, very well. But also helplessness, uh, mental, uh, f mental and physical torment, and of course, pain and anguish and cruelty. You know, cruelty obviously being a huge one here because it's one of those things that you're just gonna be like, okay, they're, they're not gonna take this any further than they are. And oh my God, okay. This is the one bad thing everyone was talking about. This has to be it. And then the next chapter, it will go even further. And oh, well, that was definitely it. Then the next chapter, like, oh my God, how far is this going to keep going? It's going to keep going all the way, guys, all the way down to the basement, as our protagonist puts it here. Uh, it's not all good. Obviously, there are some bad things here. And again, these are going to be subjective to you. I didn't necessarily find these bad. Um, if you cannot separate the real history from the story, and history is a little different than this. There's a lot of the things that are the same, but there is a much, much different side of the history than in what you see in this book. Uh, like I'd argue there was no protagonist in real life, obviously, but uh, you're going to struggle with this if you can't separate those things. Uh, see, to, to, to me, uh, it, it, when something is based off of that, I mean, I, that, to me, that's just saying you can't, you can't enjoy anything really because, and, and I don't say there's a book you can enjoy. You know, I feel like I'm really trying to have it both ways here. I apologize for that. I'm trying to be sensitive to this because I, I know it's a very, very sensitive topic to talk about. But if you have a hard time separating those things, you're, you're going to be miserable with this. To me, I think it makes it more visceral knowing that this really happened. It makes it more tragic. It makes it more sad. It makes it more heartbreaking. So uh, it, again, that's going to be you. Yes, it is incredibly difficult to read because I'll have several times where I'll be like, ah, that, that's Stephen, like a Tommyknocker. Stephen King took it too far. No, this, this takes it too far in spades. He never, ever fades to black with anything. He tells you exactly what's happening. He describes what's happening. He's very up in your face about it. And he does not pan away. And there's only one part in the entire book where he's like, I'm not going to describe to you what happens next because it's just too awful. And I was glad. I actually felt relief when that happened. But um, it, it might go a little far with his descriptions, like I say. But in my opinion, guys, why write about this subject matter? if you're not going to embrace it, if you're not going to go all in on it. And again, people being like, oh, well, I don't think there's a place to write that. Then don't read it. It's that simple. If you don't want to know about these horrific things that happened, if ignorance is bliss, I say don't read it. I, I, I never understand criticizing the author for writing the things. Uh, you know what's in there. You know the content that's in there. So don't read it if you're going to be you know, uh, destroyed about it. But again, I think it's a very human reaction to have those negative feelings while reading this book because this book will bring you down. And I'm going to talk about that now when I talk about why you should read it. Well, why should you read this book? Guys, you shouldn't. You should not. <laughs> it's a really weird, it's a unique scenario on the channel where I'm going to recommend the book, but I'm also going to recommend you don't read it because it's going to affect your mood. There is no way 
if you have a soul whatsoever, that this book is not going to bring you down. It is going to wreck you emotionally. It is going to be in your head. You're going to be kind of like staring at the wall blankly. Like, I can't believe that this stuff really happened. And it's just one of those things where it, that's that's normal. That's a normal human reaction. So it's well-written. It's a gripping story. It really is. But if you're not in the right place of mind at the time, I don't know. I think you need to be in a pretty good place when you start reading this. If you're having a rough time in life right now, I don't know if this is the book that would kind of you know push you over the edge a little bit because it will affect your mood. It is very much damaging, I think, to your psyche. And look, Ketchum's a very competent writer. I have no problems with his prose here. I think he's very, very good. Uh, it's just, you know, he's going to tell you with that very nice prose exactly what's happening in not such a pleasant, pleasant way. But uh, yeah, it's going to make you squirm, guys. This book will make you squirm and you'll think back after the fact you'll think back to any authors like i just mentioned with tommy knockers that you said oh the author went a little too far here they didn't guys they didn't and by comparison to what ketchum does in this book they did not go too far at all at all so this book is yeah it's a uh, it, it, it's rough now i do got some uh, some final thoughts here uh look i am glad that i read the book okay i want to get that out there i know it sounds like this is a negative review it's not this is a very very good book about horrible content, you know? And if you're looking for horror, I think that that is going to be exactly something that you're looking for. I would recommend not looking up the actual history before you read the book. I think that could actually make it tougher for you to read, but I do encourage you to go look up the story of Sylvia Likens after you read the story and, and, and see everything that actually really happened and how the person who did these atrocious acts actually got paroled in the 1980s. Actually, life in prison and got paroled in 20 years. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, but um, yeah, easily, guys. I, I got to say, this is the most disturbing book I've read for uh, different reasons. You know, I, I read, read a, a lot of horror and I've never ever had that feeling of like, this is this is, this is is too much. It does, it does feel like that at times. And I, while I think that King fans are going to enjoy it, I don't think it seems like a King book for one specific reason. I feel like in his books, he has his his uh, kid protagonist, you know, think of the Losers Club. So imagine the Losers Club from It, but imagine all these horrible things are happening and they don't try to do anything about it. I feel like King always has his protagonist trying to do something about it. This is one of those things where it's like, why, why are these, why are they letting this happen? You know, why is everyone just standing around letting this happen? I understand, okay, no one's going to believe. Well, then you go to someone else who will believe you. You know, it's one of those things. It's like this, this should not be allowed to happen. And you, and, and you wanting to, to, to see this happening. It's just like, are you just like a group of young serial killers? What is going on here? So I, I feel like that's not the kingism here. You're never going to feel like this is a king story because his, his protagonist would try to do something. Yeah, he's got those some you know, awful human beings. I mean, that's a big theme in his books that humans are the real monsters and they live among us. You know, that's a big theme in his books. They're the real monsters. So I think that that's kind of prevalent here. But again, I, this is not the way that his protagonists would act. And, you know, with, with Davy in this, I, I mean, you want to think that he's got redemption at some point, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if I can really say that. I, that's like that's like waiting until you know two minutes to midnight to do anything, really, in my opinion. So, I but it, it, again, it, it does follow a lot of those themes. I think that you will remember from childhood, and a lot of the things that a, a normal moral person will understand is not right. You know, it, it's making a stand against everyone, even if you feel like you're in the wrong. I understand he fears for his life here, but uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's. Uh, makes him not a very likable protagonist because like I said, too little, too late maybe. But I do guys, I do encourage you to read the book. I do encourage you to look up the real history. There are tons of documentaries about it out there, but I'm gonna tell you, it is disturbing content. It's going to mess you up a little bit. So I got, I got that point across here. This is a great, great book, but it, uh, if you are not in the right place, I wouldn't say pick it up right now. I say wait until you're better emotionally, uh, you're more stable in your life before you read this. Uh, so watch like a, a nice like happy cartoon or something before you start and, and, and when you finish because you're going to need it. So guys, that was The Girl Next Door, a book that I think a, a lot of people on this channel have been wrecking to me for a, recommending to me for a long time. And then when I was going to read it, they're all like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. I get it now. I get it. So uh, have you read it, guys? What did you think? Drop in the comments and let me know and I will talk to you there.